Welcome back everybody to the Southern Boy Pepper channel. I hope everyone is doing well and I hope everyone is safe and I hope everyone is taking all the precautions that you guys need to make sure that you don't get hit with this big bug that's going around. So as you've seen the last video we've actually uh, canned quite a bit of stuff. We canned some meat. We've actually done uh, vegetables as well with Miss or less and Miss Teresa's help and it's been busy on the homestead we've been trying to actually um, get as much stuff as we can done just in case something happens we're really worried about food shortages uh, just as well as everyone else so we've got to do our part and try to get as much as we can done so we can um, have the things that we need in case it gets worse than what it is. So as of today, I wanted to get a few blessings taken care of, um, which we really, really appreciate it. We never would have actually thought that we would have gotten um, gifts and stuff, blessings from others, from the subscribers that we have. And we so much appreciate it. Have you seen one of my blessing videos where I've received so many seeds, which was amazing. And we've received some from CT Mom. CT Mom, thank you for all that you've done for us. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you commenting on all of our videos. It really makes us feel important, just as well as all you other subscribers out there. I really appreciate all of your comments, your help, your suggestions, because they all work. Uh, they all help us out here on the homestead. Um, so CT Mom has sent us a, a letter with a package and in here there's some seeds for uh, eggplants and she has packaged them with a letter well I'm not going to really read the letter that much but she does uh, I'll give you a few things that she said that they don't really care for eggplant um, but she knew that in Louisiana that eggplant is used quite a bit in a lot of the Cajun meals that we use um, so and I'll show you one of the things that we do. We've actually uh, dehydrate eggplant. So we've gotten these done, and that's what they look like when they're done. They almost look like bacon. It's kind of like a um, a vegan bacon, and they are delicious. So if you haven't tried this, you really do need to. They're crunchy, and they're very good. So this last batch that we've done, we've kind of got that much stuff. So this is going to be snacked on. And we, we're going to need to get this uh, put up in a, you know, maybe with like a silica pack and a oxygen absor absorber as well. So this just came out the dehydrator not long ago, which is really cool, man. We're really excited about that. So, CT Mom, thank you so much for the letter and the seeds because they are going to come in handy. My eggplants that I have that we've been making all the jerky on. They're almost over with, so we're gonna, when we till up again, that's one of the things that's gonna go in the ground. And we thank you so much. We've also got a blessing from Gloria White. Thank you, Gloria White. You have been a great help to our family, and you know, we talk all the time on the phone now. You know how you develop friends through this community is amazing. So Miss Gloria has actually mailed us two books so excited about this so one of them is the encyclopedia of gardening and i have been looking at this one and i have a bookmark in here somewhere this book american horticultural society encyclopedia of gardening and it's the practical guide to gardening techniques planning and maintenance and it does all, it has so much stuff in it not just regular vegetable gardens it all kinds of different gardens that are made uh, you can really get a lot of information from it and I have a garden problem problem solver she sent me this book so anything for vegetables fruits and herbs um, it gives you a problem and it also tells you how to solve it so this is going to come in handy as well Miss Gloria thank you Miss Gloria also has a channel and I'm going to post it in the description of this so you could click on it and go to her channel. One of her last ones I really liked her channel on is in canning how to uh, know if your 
your drawers have been sealed. So that's really educational too, because there's three different ways. And I didn't know, we didn't know that. So that's really good that she showed us that. I have one more blessing that was given to us that we, I can't tell you who has sent it, just because we don't know who sent it. So we don't know who sent this, but it was a shock to get this in the mail. And it's gonna be used very much on our homestead. So we have, this is the dehydrator we use, and I love it, I really do. But it seems that someone has thought that we should get the Cadillac of dehydrators. Guys, y'all don't know how much we so appreciate this. My wife, when she, the mail truck showed up, uh, my daughter came back and she asked if there was a package, any packages came in. My daughter said, yeah, it's outside, it's a dehydrator and I can't carry it. My wife said, what? So she walked outside and lo and behold, there was an Excalibur food dehydrator. What an amazing thing to get. So we're gonna unpack this thing. I kinda open it some, but I thought about, hey, I need to get a blessing video done for the items that we've gotten in. And this is from someone, I guess I can say anonymous, because there's nothing on the labels. The paper that was in it did not have anything that shows the name. So whoever, whoever sent this, you guys are amazing. I really thank you from the bottom of my heart, and my wife thanks you as well. So let's get this thing unpacked because we got a lot of things going on in the homestead and this and this came in um, a few days ago. So um, we're ready to get some more stuff dehydrating. So let me show you what it looks like. This is the Excalibur food dehydrator. It has controls up here. It's got tape on the knobs. So it has a drying guide and it shows how much temperature that you need to be putting this on and it's color coded as well. So we're gonna take these things off. Now it gives the temperature of the time for the different ones and I'm assuming like you say if it's yellow, you want your knob over here in the yellow area. Depending on the color, depends on where you need to have your temperature set and then there's the timer for how long you want it set for how oh, cool so I need to do some book reading to know we're gonna do these onions and I think at about 135 because it's for vegetables and fruit rolls so I'm gonna put it right in the middle and then we're gonna do them for 12 hours so I'm going to put this over here for 12 hours. That's a timer, so it's going to start timing and running once you plug it in, I guess. And it runs all the way until it turns off. Here's the door. Wow, man, this is so awesome. Whoever sent this, we are so excited about it. This is absolutely amazing. I've checked these out before, and I really love to have one and now I have one we're we're so excited Kelly's so excited she's ready to get some stuff dehydrating Kelly what you think about it I'm just ready to use it you're waiting on me huh okay so it's got like one two three four five six seven eight nine drawers nine, yeah. nine drawers our other one only has five my other little bitty one has like five no, drawers Ain't that something? Ain't that cool? Four. This is awesome. This is awesome. So we're gonna get this thing ready. We're gonna put some, let me show you what we're doing. Last night we went to Market Basket and got some frozen onions. And that's what we plan on getting dehydrated today. Uh, we've been dehydrating a lot of stuff guys lately. And we've been putting it up in jars. And we're gonna get these onions. These are frozen onions now. Now we've washed them and we don't have to blanch them. All we have to do is just put them on the tray. We're going to do it about 135 degrees for 12 hours and then we're going to check it and see what we come up with. We have got the pressure cooker ready. 
because we're going to be pressure canning today. Right. Well, she's removing the jars. They've been heated. We're getting the meat warmed up. We got some sausage back there to can. And we got the broth warming up. And we're filling up the canner with water. All right, so she's getting the, we warmed up the ground meat. Now she's gonna stick it in the jar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I think I got all the water I need. It's supposed to be two to three inches in here. And I made me a, a little tape to show where three inches is. And it's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna take some out. Yes. Let's try that. A little bit more. Yeah, I will. Let me get a little bit more out. I want to make sure that we're within the two to three inches inside the pot. Yeah, we're good. All right, so the water's warming in the pressure can. So we propped up the pot to where all of the grease from this ground meat is on the other side, to where when we scoop it up, we minimize the amount of grease inside the jars. And she's putting the beef broth inside, and you can see it. And she's gonna have to go, you're gonna have to get the air out. Now she's getting the air bubbles out. I still need to feel that one. And you have your rings right there ready? Yep. Yes, ma'am, we sure do. around the whole jar to get all of the bubble air bubbles out and guys the reason why we're doing all of this canning you know and getting this meat processed and getting it canned to put on the shelf it's because if we run into a situation that we have a power outage of course we got generators here but you never know what happens that if we have a total loss of power for some reason and you have a full freezer of meat it, you know, you're going to start cooking what you can, but you're definitely going to lose meat if you're not going to get power back. You never know what this world's going to bring. So if you can get into canning some meat and getting it on a shelf, it'd be very worthwhile uh, for you and your family to have a stockpile of meats and foods that you can go back to that's on, on your shelf that didn't require heat. If you lose your power and you have no way to cook anything, when you've canned meat, it's ready to eat. Whether it's hot or cold, you can open that jar and eat it. That's right. What we're gonna have out of this batch of sausage is two quarts of sausage. We didn't have enough to make another quart, so we're gonna eat that for supper. That's gonna be our supper. Look how beautiful this sausage looks. Really I gorgeous. The sausage, I love the way the sausage looks. Me too. They look so I look good. It looks so much tastier than oh, ground meat. So good. Don't tilt your jars, Kelly. Okay. Yes. I know. Okay. That's it. I don't have That's it. In there. That's it. So we've gotten the jars in. We have quart jars of ground meat, and we also have some jars of the sausage cut in like coins. We've added broth to them and the seasoning salt. And we've got the air bubbles out. Closed them up. Now they're inside the canner. Okay. We've closed the lid. We've made sure the arrow marks correctly where it goes. And we've tightened the lid down per the instructions of the manufacturer. So now we're waiting for the steam to start. And we'll okay. be back when we get to there. The pressure is steady coming out of the pressure canner. We have three, basically three minutes left from the 10 minutes. And once the 10 minute mark is done, then we'll put the weight on top. I don't know what to say, because these things aren't cheap. And for someone just to send this to us, absolutely amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, of course, it's got to get to work. So we started putting onions on one of the trays. This is frozen onions that we purchased. And we got all of these onions to get in there. 
All right. We have another bag of onions here. This is all frozen onions. And we're gonna slice up some okra. And we're gonna get some okra on one of the trays as well to try to fill up as much as we can on this thing. Guys, this thing's got nine trays. I'll never get all of this full. Uh, we got a lot of things going on over here. We got dehydrating going. We got pressure can canning going. It's one of those days and we're so excited about it. Remember. Get the next one out. We are at the time to put the weight in. And for our area and altitude, we're using the tin. So I gotta make sure I don't burn myself. I didn't There we go. And now we wait. Now we wait. Once we get a full tray, then we'll season them. We're going to season these with Louisiana's best, Tony Sachery seasoning. It's so good when they're ready to snack on them. I'm going to sprinkle Tony Sachery's seasoning on all of these okra. Before I put them in the hydrant. You don't want to over season them. Yeah, so I'm just going to kind of lightly cover them. But that just depends on your seasoning taste too as well. And I sprinkle them over the sink so I don't okay. We're going to do these outside. Because of the onions, I don't want it to fill the house up with that smell that everybody will be crying and even the dogs will be crying. Our pressure's at 10. And the little jiggler, little weight is going off. And look at the tomatoes we got from the garden today. These are absolutely beautiful. And what I see in the future for me there's some toast bread, sliced tomatoes with salt and pepper on it, a slice of cheese, and I'll sit down, a good tomato sandwich. And after our 40 minutes, we will turn the fire off and let the pressure go back down to zero. And once that's down to zero, we'll let it sit a while and then we'll try to pick the jiggler up slowly. And if it seems like that there's a little pressure or anything, we'll put it back down on it. And uh, we'll leave it there for a while until there's no pressure left in the pot. And then from there, we will unfasten all of these on the lids. Always, when you remember when you pick this lid up, always pick it up like this, away from you. So where the steam doesn't hit you in the face. Remember safety when you're messing with these things. Pressure's down to zero, all the way down. And the next thing you need to do is we let it wait for a while to see if the weight was still relieving pressure. So we're gonna kinda, you hear that? So it's not time yet. So once there's nothing coming out, then you take it off. And it's hot. And that's it. Alright. So we got that off. And next is to undo all of these screws and get the lid off. So hang on. Just in case these things are hot. And to take this lid off, you never want to open it this way. So all this steam won't get to you. 
So you always open it away from yourself. There, oh, you gotta unlock it. You gotta turn it. Like that. Forgot about that. Oh, you got it. I think it's coming. Yeah. Go. Turn this fan on. Awesome. Look at them balling. If you want to take them out, I think the thing is in that drawer. So now we have to wait for 10 minutes before we take them out. Oh. So we got to set the timer for 10 minutes. Ooh, fogging up my lens. Okay, so it is time to get these out. I'm going to try not to tilt them. Look at that goodness, guys. Look at that. It's so crazy. <laughs> That's some goodness right there, Teresa. All right. Now, we're going to hope that these seal well. And we'll check those later. Look at this. Still looking. <laughs> All right, that's it. And remember to make sure that you're doing what you can to get all your food prepped together. We were slow to start, but I think now we're kicking it in high gear now with the gardens, um, with the with the canning that we're doing now and the dehydrating and steady buying preps. And we don't know what this world's gonna do to us, so protect your family as much as you can. Do what you can. You know, I understand that, you know, some can't get a whole lot done, but whatever you can will definitely help. So until the next one, y'all stay well, stay safe, and make sure you guys prepare for the unknown.